وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد سورة القدر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر إن شاء الله تعالى We're going to take the tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr Surah Al-Qadr is from the surah of the Quran that came down before the hijrah to Medina meaning it's called surah which are makiya and the makiya according to the scholars is anything that came down before what? before the Prophet ﷺ migrated to what? Medina so even if it came down on Mecca after the Prophet migrated to Medina it's considered Medani surah so for example if it came down in Hajj whilst the Prophet was in Mecca it won't be considered to be what? A Meccan surah. It will be considered a what? A Medanian surah. So the way to distinguish between what is Medanian and what is Meccan is any surah in the Quran that came down before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina is a Meccan surah. And anything that came down after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina is a what? It's a Medanian surah. Even if it came down on Ta'if and it came down in other places, it's called what? Medanian surah. Are we all together, brothers and sisters? So Surah Al-Qadr is from the surah which is considered to be from what? The Meccan surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we sent down the dhamir in inna anzalnahu, that pronoun in there, hu. Where does it go back to? What it goes back to is the Quran. Inna anzalnahu. We sent down a, the Quran during the night of decree. Laylatul, Laylatul Qadri. Inna anzalnahu. Allah says we sent down the Quran fi Laylatul Qadri. So the Quran, when did it come down? It came down Laylatul Qadri. The scholars here, they have two views regarding the Qur'an coming down Laylatul Qadr. And both of them, these two views, both of them, Jalaluddin al-Suyutiyu mentions in it, in his Kitab al-Itqan fi Ulum al-Qur'an. Jalaluddin al-Suyutiyu mentions it in his Kitab al-Itqan. Both of the views. The first one is, Anna al-Qur'an nazala jumlah. The Qur'an came down one time ila al-Sama'i al-Dunya. Allah subhanahu wa came down from the Lawh al-Mahfuz, and it was brought to a place called Baytul Iz, which is Sama'i Dunya. It was brought there, and this was done fi Laylatul Qadri. After that, the Quran came from Baytul Iz, and Sama'i Dunya, Munajjaman. It came portion, bit by bit. And this view is a correctly, authentically transmitted from Abdullah ibn Abbas. This Qawl is authentically transmitted from who? Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas. That the Quran was sent down, brought from the Lawh al-Mahfuz. Ila sama'i dunya. So the Quran was taken from the Lawh al-Mahfuz. It was, all of it was placed in what? Sama'i dunya. Which is Baytul Iz. And then after that, it was taken from there to Nabiullah Muhammad, Munajjaman bit by bit. And that's the first view. The second view is that 
the ayah means inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr it doesn't mean that the quran came down all at once it means anna awwal al qurani the first part of the quran it first came down and it started on laylatul qadr so the ibtida'un nuzul it is what he's referring to the beginning of the revelation started when laylatul qadr al allama muhammad ibn ibrahim ala shaykh who was the first mufti of saudi arabia and he was the mufti before Sheikh Abd Aziz Ibn Baz, alayhi rahmatullah. Him and Al Allama Muhammad Ibn Salih al Uthaymin, they chose to avoid the opinion and the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas. And they weakened that. And they chose the second opinion, which is that the Quran started, started on Laylatul Qadr. The first time that the Quran started was when? Laylatul Qadr. And the reason why Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, Al-Allama Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, Al-Sheikh Rahimahullah, and Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al uthaymin they took that view is because of the following reason. From the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas, there are people who use it in their advantage, such as the Asha'ira. The way that they use it in their advantage is, and the Asha'ira are a deviated group. The way that they use it in their advantage is in the following way. They said that if the Quran came from what? If the Quran came down from where? If the Quran came down from the Lawhul Mahfuz, and then it came to Sama'i Dunya, and then from the Sama'i Dunya it was brought to the Messenger, that could be understood that the Quran was not read onto Jibreel. Okay? So the Quran, all it got taken from is the Lawhul Mahfuz, and then it was placed at Sama'i Dunya, and then from the Sama'i Dunya it was brought to the Messenger. And as you all should know, is that the Asha'ira believe Allah's speech does not come out of him. They believe what is known as kalam nafsi. Allah's, the speech is within him. It doesn't come out. Because they don't believe Allah utters and vocalizes. And that his vo- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a voice. They don't believe that, the Asha'ira. So when they were asked, where does this, how did this Quran reach us? They benefited from what? The call of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the call of Ibn Abbas doesn't support them in any way, form, or shape. The reason why he doesn't is because Abdullah ibn Abbas mentioned that the Quran comes from the Lawhul Mahfuz, and where does it come down to? Sama'i? Sama'i dunya. But then it doesn't negate that Jibreel could have still heard it from Allah, even though it is in the Sama'i dunya. That Allah read it for him, Jibreel, onto Jibreel, and said, this part, take it to Muhammad. And that is what we believe. When we bring the Nusus together, does that make sense, brothers? So the first time before it even came from the Lawhul Mahfud, it was read onto Jibreel. And then after it was brought to Sama'i Dunya, to Nabi Allah Muhammad, it was also read on Jibreel again. So Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, <clears throat> He is the one who what? Who spoke it, because the Quran is Allah's speech. Allah Allah said in the Quran, وَإِنْ أَحَدُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ In another ayah, Allah says, يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ So the Quran is the speech of who? It's the speech of Allah. And the قول of Ibn Abbas is the قول of the جمهور المفسرين And it's the قول of the جمهور العلماء Meaning the overwhelming majority of scholars believe the view of Ibn Abbas And that is the strongest, inshallah. Inna anzalnahu. Allah says we sat down. Who the Quran? Fi laylatil qadri. What opinion do we take? That the Quran was sent down. Jumla, wahida, one time. Ila samai dunya. To the samai dunya. And then from the samai dunya, it came to Nabi Allah Muhammad. Mufarraqan, munajjaman. Bit by bit. Upon our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ولذلك how do we reconcile between إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر that the Quran was sent down ليلة القدر and when Allah says وقال الذين كفروا وقال الذين كفروا those who disbelieve they said وقال الذين كفروا لولا نزل عليه القرآن جملة واحدة كذلك لنثبت به فؤادك ورتلناه ترتيلا if this Quran was sent down جملة واحدة the kufar said that Muhammad we will believe in you with one condition what is our condition that the Quran comes down all at once. This is the conditions that they were stipulating. Pay attention here. And here we have Allah saying, saying we sent down the Quran 
in portions and in bits. Why? لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ So we can solidify your heart with it. In Allah saying we set the Quran bit by bit. Are we all together brothers? And here Surah Al-Qadr Allah is saying إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ We set the whole Quran all at once. So how do we reconcile between the two? We reconcile between it based on the kalam of Ibn Abbas. Which is that Na'am Surah Al-Qadr is talking about the Quran. All of it came down once from the uh, uh, from Lawh Al-Mahfuz to Ila Sama'i Dunya. That's what Surah Al-Qadr is talking about. And the one in Surah Al-Furqan is talking about from the Sama'i Dunya to what? To the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That came down what? Bit by bit. Um, why is it called Laylatul Qadr? What's the reason why it's called Laylatul Qadr? There's three views why it's called Laylatul Qadr. The first view is that the reason why it's called Laylatul Qadr in the Arabic language, when they want to speak about a person, they say Fulanun Dhu Qadr, Ay Dhu Sharaf. This person has a great station, he's of nobility. So the word Laylatul Al Qadr it means Ay Dhu Sharaf. Rifa, something that's high, that has a great position. Does that make sense? And the siyaq of the Quran, it, the surah itself, the context that it's that it's in, it shows that yes, it could mean this. Because Allah says after that, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَارِ So Allah is, the fact that he asked, do you even know وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Do you know what لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ is? So what does this show? That it has what? It has sharaf and it has a what? A rif'ah. It has a great position. So the first reason, or the first reason why it's called Laylatul Qadr is because it has what? The sharaf and it has qudra. I mean, rif'ah, sorry. The second one is, the reason why it was called Laylatul Qadr is because this is the night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he destines waqa'i'a as-sanawiyya. I'm a waqa'i'a as-sana. I'm a taqdeeru as the scholars call it. The whole year, what's going to take place is going to be written that night. That, that night is written what is destined for you that whole year. The, the Allah wa Taala, the Qadr, it has levels. There's one when you're in your mother's stomach. Inna hadakum yujma'u khalqu fi badni ummi arba'ina yawman nutfa. Thumma yakunu alaqatan mithala dharik. Thumma yakunu mudghatan mithala dharik. Thumma yursalu ilayhi malak. Fayunfakhu fihi al-ruh. Wa yu'maru bi arba'i kalimat. Bi katibi rizqihi wa ajalihi wa amalihi shaqiyun. Oh, Sa'id. And then the angel, when it comes down in your mother's womb, he writes down the Qadr for you. And there's another one that's done, which is what? The yearly one. There's a yearly one that, that is done. Allah says in another ayah, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْذِرِينَ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ that, that, that night, Laylatul Qadr, Allah says, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ مَا مَعَنَا يُفْرَقُ that night is when everything is being noted down for what is going to take place for you that whole year. Does that make sense? That's the second meaning why it's called Laylatul Qadr, meaning that Qadr of that year is being written on that night. The second one is that Al-Diq. Al-Diq here means that it's tight. The Arabs use the word Qadr when something is tight. Even Allah used it in the Quran. فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَقَدَرَ هِيَ مِنْ زُوَيْتِ وَضَيَّقَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ Allah makes your provision tight for you. So they said the reason why it was called Laylatul Qadr is because the angels come down and they fill this earth and the earth becomes tight on the angels. These are the three aqwal and the first two is the strongest. The first two is what? Is the strongest of why it's called, why it's called Laylatul Qadri. The third point that we have to understand is Laylatul Qadr, when is it? Ta'yeenu Laylatul Qadr. When can we narrow it down to? And can, when can we say it is? First of all, we have to understand this is from the Masail. Ikhtalafa fihi al-ulama. The scholars, they differed. Wala ikhtalafat fihi al-anzar. The observation of the scholars became different. Ibn Hajar mentions in Fathul Bari that the views of the scholars have reached 40 different views. 40. There are how many views, brothers? 40 different views. And if you bring the uh, ayah, if you bring the ahadith together now, they become different in what it says. Okay, brothers and sisters. If you bring the ahadith and the nusus together, it becomes what? It becomes uh, different. Well, 
the person who was very strong and adamant in his view and was strong on it, in the sense what I mean strong, he believed in it with unwavering conviction, was the noble companion Ubay. Ubay swore by Allah. And he said, Wallahi by Allah. Inni la a'lamu ayyu laylatin hiya. By Allah, I know what night that day is. I know when Laylatul Qadr is. Hiya laylatul lati amarana Allahu biha. It is the night in which Allah commanded us. Sorry, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us. It is the night in which the Messenger commanded us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi qiyamiha. The pray and to establish that night. Hiya laylatul sabihati sab'in wa ishirina. It is the precede, it, it, it precedes the morning of the 20 of the 27th. It is the night that the day preceding the 27th. And then look what he said after that. وَأَمَارَتُهَا And the indication of it is that the sun rises bright on that day without any rays. And تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ فِي صَبِيحَةِ يَوْمِهَا بَيْضَاءَ لَا شُعَاءَ لَهَا So Ubay swore by what day it was. Other Sahabas, they have different views. The A'immatul Madahib even differed amongst themselves. And Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he believes, for instance, the whole month of Ramadan, the whole month, and Imam Abu Hanifa, he believes the whole month of Ramadan, it could be whatever day. And Imam Malik and an Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, they believe annaha tantaqilu fil a'wam. It bounces from one year to another. So the Laylatul Qadr may not be this year. It may be next year. If that's what they believe. Malik and who? Ahmed. Like that's not the madhab of Imam Ahmed. See, the Imam Ahmed's qawl is different from the qawl of the madhab. The madhab al Hanabila, they believe is on the 27th. They strengthen that opinion and that it's in that witr. The madhab of Imam, Abu, uh, Imam uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And Imam Shafi'i, he believes it's in the last 10 days. It's in the last 10 days, the odd numbers. 21, 23, 25, 27, 29. Like in the madhab of Imam Shafi'i, he believes it's the 21st. They believe, they believe it's the what? The 21st. Madhab al-Shafi'iyya, that's what they believe. Wal-qawl al-rajih. Because the qa'idah according to the ulama, the usuliyin is what? I'mal al-adillah awla min ihmali. To bring all of the evidences and to implement it takes precedence over disregarding some of the evidences. I'mal al-adillah awla min ihmaliha. To take all of the evidences on board. And to take all of the aqwal of the ulama on board and to, uh, to give it consideration takes precedence over disregarding it. And the way that we can res solve this issue is what? That Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan because all of the nusus, all of the evidences show that. It's in the last, what? 10 days of Ramadan min ghayri ta'yeen without any particular day. Not only that, it bounces within the 10 days. Sometimes it can be the 21st, it can be the 22nd, it can be the 23rd. Last year it could have been the 27th. This year it doesn't have to necessarily be the 27th. It can be some other day. It changes within the last, within the last 10 days. When he said the statement of Ubay, when he swore by Allah that it was on the 27th, we will say that year when he was talking was on the 27th. That particular year, which Ubay saw the sign and he was talking about based on the indications, it was on the 27th. But that doesn't mean it's always the 27th. Now one needs to ask himself, what is it that prevented us from knowing this particular day? Or from knowing the answer based on the hadith of the Prophet Rajulani, two men argued. And the Messenger was told about it. And he was sallallahu alayhi was about to tell us about it. But he saw two men argue and disputation between the two of them. And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I was informed of the Laylatul Qadr. But then Fulan and Fulan argued and disputed and he had to get in between resolving their problem. And he said, I was made to forget it. And maybe he said, there's good in it for you. Maybe there is good in it, in it for you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said something very powerful. He said, تَحَرُّوا لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ أَمَا فَابْتَغُوهَا فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ Look for it in the last 10 days. Look for it in what? The last 10 days. Well, it is very important that when these last 10 days come in, since it can be on any particular day, that you exert your whole effort in it. Well, Aisha, what did she say? 
إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ If the last ten days enter, what did the Prophet do? What did he do? أَحْيَا اللَّيْلَةَ أَحْيَا اللَّيْلَةَ وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَةَ وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرَ وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ The Prophet Sallallahu if the last ten days entered, he will revive the night. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will, he will boycott his bed. And he would revive those last ten days. Salawatullahi wa salamu wa alayhi. Wa wa shadda mi'zara. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will tighten his waist. And this, the scholars, they say, it could be one of two. Either he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray a lot. So tighten your waist means, you know when you go to the gym, you wear a belt. When you want to pick up a lot of weights. Ah, the Arabs, they had this. That when the person wants to carry something heavy, they would put something, uh, tie things on their back. So meaning the Prophet ﷺ would work hard. That's one. أَمَا وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَ أَمَا وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ It means كِنَايَةٌ عَنِ الْبْتِعَادٍ عَنِ الْجَمَعَ That the Prophet ﷺ would boycott intimacy with his family, his wife. He would stay away from that. And he would focus on ibadah this last 10 days. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those are the two views. وَأَيْقَذَ أَهْلَهُ And he would wake up his family. And he would say, this is not a time to sleep. This is not a time to enjoy and laugh and play. It's a time of al-jid and ijtihad. So when the last 10 days enter, what does one have to do, brothers? He has to work hard. And abshiru, glad tidings, which is that if a person doesn't get that night to pray qiyamul layl or they don't get much, we have to remember that Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, it was authentically transmitted from him that if a person prays isha, then he has the reward of the whole night. So it's as though you revive the night. And this, of course, is taken from the hadith in Sahih Muslim in Hadith Uthman ibn Affan. It's taken from the hadith in what? In Sahih Muslim in Hadith Uthman ibn Affan, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man salla salat al isha'i ma'al jama'ah, fakaanna qama al layla, fakaanna qama nisfa al layl. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, anyone who prays salat al isha'i in congregation, it's like he stood up half of the night. وَمَنْ صَلَّى صَلَاةَ الصُّبْحِ مَعَ الْجَمَاعَةِ And anyone who praised the salat al-fajr in jama'ah, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهِ It's like he stood up the whole night. Half and half makes a what? Makes a full. It makes a whole. So now you have prayed the whole night. So if you just pray fajr and isha, both of them in what? Jama'ah. It's like you spent the whole night praying. Let alone if you pray, if you come with what? If you come with salah and dhikr and adhkar and Qur'an, then the matter becomes even greater. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Inna anzalnahu, we have sent it, the Qur'an, fi laylatil qadri, we sent it during the night of decree. Pay attention. When we said that you pray by laylatul qadri, is it night or is it day? It's not the day. It's the night. As Allah said in the same surah, what did he say? Salamun hiya hatta matla'i al-fajr. Until fajr is over. The night you missed it. That Laylatul Qadr is at night time. When he what the Prophet said in the hadith, in Sahihain, in Hadith Abi Huraira, the Prophet said, Man qama Laylatul Qadr, Imanan wa Hatisaba, Wufira lahu ma taqaddami min dambi. If you stand up the last, if you stand up Laylatul Qadr, Imanan and Hatisab, hoping reward from Allah with good intention, with sincerity, you will be forgiven for your what? You will be forgiven for your sins. Ibn Taymiyyah took this hadith and he said it even involves the major sins. It even involves what? Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said, he said it involves the major sins. That you will even be forgiven for your major sins. Generally the major sins they require what? They require repentance with its three conditions. and nadam al-azma al la ya'ud alayhi. And Ali Qala'u min al-Dambi. It requires those three. If it's haq of Allah. And if it's a haq of a human being, then of course it requires a tahallul min al-Madalim. But Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said, you don't even need that. The Laylatul Qadri by itself forgives you for your sin. By standing up that night, he said it's significant for repentance. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Allah then says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ And what can make you know مَا Laylatul Qadri What is the night of decree? The fact that Allah asked the messenger and he said to him, and what can make you know, Muhammad, what the night of decree is? What? It shows, and it's an indication to what? It's an indication 
that the, the greatness and the superiority of Laylatul Qadr. There's a fairy tale that people spread, which is Laylatul Qadr, you will meet a man who's wearing white clothes and his thumb, there's no bone in it. Have you guys heard of that before? Huh? Who's heard of that before? Yeah? Who's heard of that myth? That if it's Laylatul Qadr, a man with, with a white thaw, ulama mention it in their works. It's a concept people, some people believe. That's not true. Like in what it is, I mentioned it to you right now. In the hadith of Ubay, what is it? The morning after, what is it going to be? The sun when it comes out is going to have no, no, no what? Had noise. Sun, but it's not, it hasn't got shu'a of the people. These are signs. Of course, the earth is becomes calm. All of that are alamat and signs that it, the night before was Laylatul Qadr. Allah then says, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min al fishar. The night of decree is better than a thousand months. It is better than what? It is better than a thousand months. How much is a thousand months? Thousand months is 83 and four months. So 83 years and four months. This is more than what? This is more than Umrul Ghalib. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did he say? أعمار أمتي ما بين الستين والسبعين وقليل من يجوز ذلك. That the um, my ummah, their living and the lifespan is between sixty to what? Seventy. Look what the Prophet then said. وقليل من يجوز ذلك. A little go over that. Not many people go over seventy. Majority of the people die way before seventy. صحيح. ليلة القدر one time is more than a lot of people's lifespan. The scholars, they mentioned the reason why Allah gave this to us is because the previous umam, the previous nations, they had longer lifespan than we did. And we could never catch up with them. Look at Nabiullah Nuh. Nabiullah Nuh. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَىٰ خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Nuh stayed with his people for how many years? Giving them da'wah? 950 years. That's how many years he's been giving da'wah. Allah alam how old he was. Are we all together? Al-Imam, Ibn, Al-Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, mentions in Kitab, he mentions in what? His Kitab is Zuhd. Imam Ahmed mentions it. That Al-Imam, uh, Nabiullah Nuh saw a woman crying over her. She was crying over a, a, a child that she lost. So she was on top of his grave, she was crying. And so uh, Nabiullah Nuh said to her, how old was your child? She said 500 years. So to her, how many, 500 years was what? A baby. He, child, he died as a child. That's how old he, this, how long did these people lived for? Are we all together? We don't have that. But what did Allah give us? Allah gave us seasonal times that come in the year where you can benefit from. That can give you that time. Imagine you got hold of five Laylatul Qadr. You worked hard. Five Ramadan that came consecutively. You got hold of it. How many times? How many? How much do you have? Allahu Allah. Huh? Hundreds of uh, year, years you have. Are we together, brothers? It's what's being given to you. So, Laylatul Qadr is not a matter that you take lightly. So you work hard in making sure that you get hold of it. And guess what? It's 83 years and 4 months of consecutive ibadah non-stop. That's what it's equal to. Laylatul Qadri Khairu bin Alfi Shahr means 83, 83 years of four months, not one second you stop. Not a lahra you stop. It's consecutive, just that one particular night. Isn't that Minar Rahmat? Isn't that from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave you this opportunity? And then somebody might see that and not benefit from it. Laylatul Qadri, the night of decree, is better than a thousand months. Pay attention. It's 83 years consecutively, but when Laylatul Qadr comes, it has to be stopped again because it can't be part of it. Do you get my point? It's 83 years consecutively, but Laylatul Qadr can't be part of the 83 years. Are we all together? So it's if you do 83 years consecutively, and Laylatul Qadr comes, that's not part of it. And then you're adding another 83 years onto your life of ibadah and ta'a that you're coming, that you're coming with. This shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. Laylatul Qadri. 
خَيْرٌ it is better مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ is better than a thousand months 83 years and 4 months تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أي تَتَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ and this is from the angle of grammar مِنْ بَابِ حَرْفِ إِحْدَ التَّائِنِ it's meant to be what? تَتَنَزَّلُ like in the one of the ta is removed so it becomes تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ the angels will descend before I go into this when Laylatul Qadr comes, what dua should one make? And what should they focus on saying that day? What the person should focus on doing is to increase in the dua that the messenger prescribed for our mother Aisha. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, or Messenger of Allah, Ara'ayta, Ida wa fahtu Laylatul Qadr ma ad'u. O Messenger of Allah, if Laylatul Qadr is a night I get hold of, what should dua should I make? The messenger said to her, Taqulina, you're going to say, اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عني أو الله إنك عفو you are one who forgives تحب العفو you love to forgive and you love forgiveness فاعف عني forgive me don't add اللهم إنك عفو كريم is not in the hadith the word كريم is not in there so stick with what اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عني that dua is what the messenger told our mother Aisha to say in that night fi Laylatul Qadri. Many virtues have come regarding Laylatul Qadri and I mentioned, I have mentioned them to you. What does it mean? Tanazzalu al wal-ruhu. The malaika is the angels. Wal-ruhu means Jibreel. And you can see Jibreel has been taken out of the angels. And this the scholars, they call it Atful khasi ala al is when a specific is being connected to a general. Meaning, Jibreel is part of the angels, but Allah chose to take him out of the angels. If Allah said, Tanazzalu al-malaika, the angels are going to descend, that would have been enough. Jibreel would have been part of that. But if Jibreel is not like the normal angels. Are we all together? So Allah took him out, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying, Warruhu, Jibreel came down. And this is common in the Quran. Allah does that. For example, Iyaka, Na'budu, وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعْنَ إِسْتِعَانَ إِذَا عِبَادَةً And Allah says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ Oh Allah, you we worship. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِنَ And you we seek help from. Asking help from Allah is a what? A form of ibadah. But it was taken out of ibadah because ibadah, what makes you do ibadah is when you seek help from Allah. As the Prophet said to Mu'adh, يَا مُعَادْ وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأُحِبُّكُ مُعَادْ وَاللَّهِ I love you. The Prophet said this to him. وَاللَّهِ مُعَادْ I love you. فَلَا تَدَعَنَّ Don't leave off. And taqula fi duburi kulli salah to say at the ending of every prayer, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, aid me, help me. Ala dhikrika in your remembrance. Wa dhikri wa shukrika in showing you gratitude. Wa husni ibadatika and perfecting the ibadah for you. Oh Allah, aid me in it. So isti'ana was taken out of what? Ibadah. For what reason? Because of its importance. The same way here that. Jibreel was taken out of the what? He was taken out of the angels. Tanazzalu al malaikatu the angels would descend. Warruhu Jibreel will send, will descend. Fiha in that night. He will descend. The angels and Jibreel will descend within that night. Bi Rabbihim by the permission of their by the permission of their Lord. The Ithin here is the universal permission. Because the permission are two types. The legislative permission. And the universal permission. This is not the legislation, legislative permission. It's the what? It's the universal permission that Allah gives them. Min kulli amrin in all affairs. Here a question. Let's talk about the first part of the ayah. Tanazzalu al wal-ruh. The angels and Jibreel are going to descend. In this night of Laylatul Qadr. What does that mean? Two, two views the scholars mentioned. The first one is that the angels are going to descend that night بِالرَّحَمَاتِ barakat. They're going to descend that night with mercy and blessings. That's what they're coming down with. They're bringing tranquility, sakira. Like they do when the people read Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا حَفَّتُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ 
that there's not a people who read Quran in a gathering and they revise it amongst themselves except what? إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ Tranquility comes down. وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels are going to go around you with their shoulders protecting you, their wings. Just like that, Laylatul Qadr, they also come down like that with that barakat and that rahamat and that sakina. That's one view. The second view is that the angels are coming down this particular night with everything Allah destined. They're coming down to execute everything Allah destined subhanahu wa ta'ala for that particular year. Didn't Allah say, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ We're going to send angels down. These angels are going to do what? They're going to execute what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for the year. So they're going to straight, they're straight away coming down to put down everything in place. Those are the two views and they, don't they do not contradict one another. This is called اختلاف التنوع لا اختلاف التضاد Meaning they come down to do both. They come down to do what? Both. So it's not a conflicting view. That's what it's meant by it. Then the ayah mentions inside it, look, min kulli amrin in all of matters. What does it mean, min kulli amrin? What does it mean um, for every matter? What does it mean? The scholars, they have two views. The two views is, some of the scholars, they say that um, min kulli amrin is connected to what was already mentioned. So for every matter that was previously mentioned in the surah, as in what was mentioned before that, that what was mentioned is that تنزل الملائكة والروح The angels are going to come down with what Allah destined. Okay? That's the first view. Meaning what was mentioned before in the surah, and what was mentioned before? تنزل الملائكة And what did I say تنزل الملائكة means? That the angels are coming down with what? What Allah destined. Are we together brothers? That's one view is meant by fi kulli amrin in every matter that Allah destined. That's one. The second view is that it's connected to what comes after in the surah, which is salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. That in every matter that is going to bring down peace. Are we all together? Those are the two, two views that the scholars they uh, took. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Salamun, peace. Hiya hatta matla'il fajri. Salamun, hiya. The scholars, they say, Salamun, peace. Hiya, it. Ama salamun, hiya. Peace, it is. What is peace? There's two views. First view is, some of the scholars who said that the peace here is talking about the angels. That when the angels are coming down with each other, with the command of their Lord and the permission that He gave them. They're coming with peace and they are also greeting one another with peace. They say to each other, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum. That's one view of the scholars. The second view is, Salamun is not talking about the angels. Here it's not talking about the angels. It's talking about the night. This night is a night of peace. Laylatul Qadr, it's a night of peace. And it's talking about that night, not the angels. Salamun. Peace it is that night. Hatta matla il fajri. The word matla is a masdar, is a verbal noun. And uh, Sheikh Jamal can correct me if I'm wrong. Like in the Zakira, I think that they read matla and matli'. Sah, Sheikh Jamal? Yeah, sah. So there's a qira where they place a fatha and there's a kasra. Scholars differed how to reconcile between the two. Matla and matli' is both of them masdar. Or is it not? Well, Qawlul Rajah is both of them is Mazdar. Because of another discussion that I don't want to go into because the word Hatta is Lil Ghaya. It shows until. And that's time. And the verbal noun is best to not connect it to time. That's another niqash grammatically that the scholars have a long discussion on. Salamun, peace it is until Matla'il Fajr. Matla' means the emerging of the dawn. Until then, Peace is that particular night. So Laylatul Qadri is all restricted to the night. It has nothing to do with the day. I will conclude there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. 
Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.